morning everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. It is, uh, it was around in the 50s last night. Yesterday was a high of I think 75 and it actually felt cold which to us was great. It was such a relief after all the intense heat we've had since May. Um, it was really nice to have a break and the cooler night last night was so good so very good nice break from sweating all night it's been a brutal year and everybody in this area at least that I know has agreed and talked about it it's been a pretty intense year but uh, enough of the weather anyway I was sitting out here having my coffee and figured I might as well have a coffee chat we haven't done that in a long time I didn't do any video yesterday and I'll explain why in a minute Uh, fresh coffee with goat's milk, raw goat's milk. Really, really good. I tell you, it's a, a very good flavor. As um, long as these goats are here, I won't go back to cow milk. Definitely don't go back to cow milk. And definitely not the stuff from the store. The, uh, the fresh stuff is more digestible and much better in your system. Uh, we had some guests over yesterday. And we spent the whole day visiting and uh, showing them around the off-grid homestead. And we, if they decide they want to be on video today, we will reveal who our guests are. And because they'll be back again today. Um, that is part of the reason we were scrambling so hard out here to clean the area up. Well, I wish my truck wasn't right there. If I may just move my truck so I can show you what it looks like over here with nothing there at all. It's so beautiful. We cleaned up in, around the truck camper and we worked really hard, all of us as a team, and we really knocked it out. So when you come in, there's no chaotic mess anywhere. It's just you see straight into the gardens and the flowers and that's the first thing you see. And uh, before we had some stuff there, uh, the Jeep tires and some other stuff were right there. And the first thing you see is that stuff because it was cluttered looking. So we rolled the Jeep tires away and we rolled away anything else and took away anything that was uh, just didn't belong there. And Chris and I are slowly sorting out out back here. We're uh, in line with the goat cage. What we're doing is we're lining up all of our building supplies neatly, very neatly stacked, all of our building supplies on pallets. So we have, uh, for example, we have some uh, cedar wood now. We have a little bit of pallet wood, which is for the kitchen cabinets, special, that's a different kind of pallet wood. And we've got some uh, windows that are gonna be for the greenhouse. I really hope we make it this year. And we've got stacks nice and neatly in pallets in a row. And we're going to go right on back in line with the goat house so that looking from here in front of the house, you won't see anything out there. Nothing at all. It's going to be very, very nice. Um, you just look out here and you'll just not see a thing. So we're working on I don't know what's going on. Melanie's milking the goats. Melanie milks the goats in the morning and I milk them in the afternoon or the evening time. We milk them twice a day. And... Um, that's some farms that have too many animals, or I should say some farms that have a lot more animals. They milk once a day, and we milk twice a day, which uh, gives you, I think, a little bit more milk, and I think it's more comfortable for the animals. So we do that morning and evening, and the goats will let you know if you're late. They will, they will let you know. So we've been... My arms are still really sore from the cheap chainsaws, by the way. We were cutting for a few days straight, and the, I'll tell you what, I now know, I understand, now that I've had the Husqvarna in my hand, the difference between a cheap chainsaw and a good chainsaw. Because down here and up here, uh, my muscles are just really still hurting days afterwards from the cheap chainsaw just vibrating and vibrating. It's, it's really, really uncomfortable on your whole upper body. Um, probably not healthy for you. So, you know, the guys that are out there cutting wood professionally, uh, they got really 
good saws, and boy, the difference is like night and day. Big difference on the on the, uh, the comfort of the Husqvarna compared to the others. And once I get my home light old blue back, which is uh, I was told a 60 cc. I never looked it up. I just had somebody tell me it's a 60 cc, um, but old. It's not a vibration free, and it's heavy. I'd like to do a a cutting comparison between the Husqvarna and which is ultralight, it's only 10 pounds, and the old blue. And uh, just do a comparison from old to new. Also, uh, once we get our junk saws um, back in order again, the, uh, the McCulloch, we're going to look for the adjusting, um, what do you call it, the tensioner, the tensioner for the bar. We're going to look for one. Um, the parts shop says they don't exist, but then again, he doesn't have them in his catalog, so he's not going to waste any time searching on the internet, which is understandable. We can uh, we can do that. But I want to get all of them running again because it's good to have a standby. Sometimes you have people out here helping out, and you want to have a spare chainsaw, or you just want to cut a limb down or something, or uh, chop up a branch that fell, or whatever. So I want to one day do a comparison, and my friends have chainsaws that I could borrow for this, but I want to, I want to do a comparison between the powers of different chainsaws, because I've really been experiencing a lot in the last couple of years with chainsaws that, for example, one is a 38cc, but outperforms a 42cc. Uh, and, and so it's not just the cubic centimeters, it's not just the engine displacement. There's a lot more involved in the performance of a chainsaw. And, of course, then the Husqvarna compared to the old blue home light, the weight of the Husqvarna is so light and so comfortable to handle and then being vibration free, such a huge difference. Huge, huge difference in comfort. So that I want to do a, a comparison one day between chainsaws. Once, uh, like I said, once I get them all together. And what else have we been up to? We've just been cutting wood, splitting wood, clearing a forest, clearing a large chunk of, of area out here. Our, our primary goal right now, because the our baby birds have outgrown the little chicken coop, so we had to release them into the goat pen. Like I can barely, I can barely lift my arms from the uh, the cheap chainsaws. It still hurts. Um, so the the chickens are running free in the goat pen, and uh, it's not optimal. Okay, it's it, it, it's dirty, and so what we're doing. I mean, the goats are fine. What we're doing is we're clearing out this area to make a large chicken run like I had out here, but actually a little bit bigger. It's going to be a little bit bigger. And then the birds can free range in that area, and which they're doing right now anyway. They're free ranging out here in this area. Every once in a while they'll wander up into the garden. We have to chase them away. We do not want them to get a taste of garden veggies or we will have trouble. We have not clipped their wings yet, but that's because right now they have the only protection they have right now is their wings. And we do put them in at night, into the cage, but, you know, for their safety. But um, it's cute. It's really neat to have the birds running around all over the place when you work. It's really cute. Uh, it has a really good homestead feeling. And I like it. But they are a nuisance. They, they, they get into everything. And they are a nuisance when they're free like that. So we'll have a, a nice runway for them over there. So that's the primary goal. That's priority now over everything else because the birds need their home now, right now, and they need their protection. So Chris and I have been plugging along at that. And then of course finishing up the garden, we're harvesting the garden and we're eating primarily now from the garden. Melanie cooked us a, we should have done a video, I'm sorry, but Melanie cooked a really nice uh, summer squash lasagna using almost everything from our garden except for the cheese, all right, which she had to, we, we bought. Our cheese um, is not, it doesn't melt. So anyway, well that was that was really good. And that feels good to eat from your garden, primarily from your own garden. So this week, moving forward, it's going to be working on a chicken run, just chopping up those logs. And today is Tuesday. We are going to have our guests over again. We may or may not do some video with them. We'll see what they feel like. Uh, you'll be surprised when you find out who it is. 
and most of you know them. And if you don't, you soon will, because I'm sure you'll check out their channel. Let me show you, I'm going to move the truck here, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like over here with everything gone. It's just really, really nice. Look here, everybody. There's a truck camper. There's a cherry picker and a motorcycle. We have our um, outdoor kitchen, which I want to put a little lean-to over and put Melanie's cookware over here, her oven. And our little garden, or our little uh, table in front of the house. And here we've got nothing at all, except for a chair underneath the camper. We've got nothing here anymore, out in front of the truck camper. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. Clean, clear, raked up even ground. Really nice. So when you come in, there's nothing. This is the view when you come in. Chris is working on a little bit of wood by the Jeep, so... But beyond that, you can see nothing. Well, the first thing you see is the gardens and the flowers. You see the flowers is the first thing your eyes come to in the garden. Just clean, clean and beautiful. If we didn't have to have that solar panel there, that'd be nice over here. But that's for the uh, motorhomes, for lighting for inside. Often we uh, have to run in and grab something or whatever. But this is the view you get now when you walk, or when you, when you walk in, you drive in to the off-grid homestead. This is the first thing you see. Now when you come into the homestead, and then of course you would drive up to here, where we park, and you would get out of your vehicle, and you see the flowers, Melanie's flowers. And um, it's looking really good. We all really contributed and worked hard together to make this place nice. So, alright, I'm going to get this video up for you all, and uh, talk to you all later. Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project.